Hey, we're going to learn about genetics today, and you're going to find it absolutely fantastic. Let's start off with this amazing picture. <laughs> genes for genes. Get it? It's like the same word, but it means different things. So today we're going to get into genetics and heredity and what it means. <clears throat> and this is kind of our intro, learning about traits and different types of traits and allele alleles. Uh, in order to actually then afterwards get into our study of actually how uh, traits are passed on from one generation to the next and we're going to get into some analysis and skills around genetics mainly using things like punnett squares so what is genetics well genetics is the branch of science that deals with the study of heredity a uh, reminder that heredity is the passing on of traits from one generation to the next uh, yeah, there it is on the slide. So just reading that again. Uh, so that's what we're getting into. So to start off, first of all, when we take a look at variation, uh, we have two different types of like variation in traits when we look at. So when we look at um, different traits, we can either say that a trait has what we call continuous variation or discrete variation. We're going to talk about the difference between these two terms. But essentially, continuous variation is where we have a range of possibilities. So if we have continuous variation for a trait, we have unlimited possibilities uh, in between. It's not just yes or no, it's a spectrum of different options. So some examples of things that have continuous variation or traits that have continuous variation are things like hair color, eye color, skin color, height. We can agree that for these traits, you have unlimited possibilities, right, uh, for the trait. That doesn't mean that any skin color is possible. We're not going to have a blue person, or at least I don't think. Uh, but we can have a large range of different options, and it can be anywhere in between. So, for example, if I take a look at this picture, look at all those different skin colors, right? So it's not yes or no. It's that we can have a large variety of different skin colors, and therefore it is a continuous trait. Um, <coughs> another picture this is different eyes right so we can see that we have all different kinds of eye colors and again this is a continuous trait now of course that's influenced by the genes that you have right you get your eye color and your skin color and so on from the genes that your parents have that are passed on to you but the trait itself has a large spectrum of different options that are possible and that's the idea behind continuous trait little side thing um, for skin color my son at some point I just thought about this and hey little story uh, when he was very young like a baby he used to love sweet potatoes so he ate sweet potatoes all the time constantly and it actually started changing his skin color he started turning orange he looked like we were giving him a spray tan and it was kind of funny but as soon as he stopped eating sweet potatoes that resolved which was nice so we no longer have an orange child uh yeah anyways discrete variation to contrast that is where i have limited possibilities for a trait so uh, it's not a spectrum, but it's kind of like yes or no, or uh, a mixed set of determined options. So for example, tongue rolling is a discrete trait in that you can either roll your tongue or you cannot. This is something that we'll actually deal with in the genetics lab we'll do later on, but try it right now. Can you roll your tongue? Mm, that's what I mean by roll my tongue. If you can roll your tongue, then you have the tongue rolling gene, uh, which is, we'll talk about this later, but a dominant gene. If you cannot roll your tongue, then you do not have the gene for tongue rolling, uh, which is kind of interesting. But again, this has a limited range of possibilities. You're either a roller or you are not. Blood type is another example. When you look at blood type, uh, there's a set number of blood types you can have, right? You could be A, B, or O. Uh, and this, again, is a genetic trait. You are one of those options. There aren't options in between. It's A, B, or O as your blood type. And I know that there's positive and negative and all that. Um, we're not going to get into that, but basically I'm just talking about the general letters. Um, male or female, right? So when you look at sex, there's uh, two options there uh, based on the chromosomes you get. Earlobe, whether your earlobe is attached or not. That is discrete variation as well. So if I take a look, here's another one. This is tongue rolling, right? Can roll, can't roll. Uh, dimples is another one, if you have dimples or not. 
This is the earlobe thing. This is an attached earlobe. This is an unattached or a dangling earlobe, right? So that's another genetic trait. And this is examples of discrete variation in that we just have a limited set of options. So going back again, continuous, I have kind of unlimited options. Okay, and then if I have discrete traits, I have a set number of options that it can fit into. Now, we already talked about what a gene was, so quick review of that. Gene is a segment of DNA that basically ends up coding or giving instructions for making a protein. So what that does is it actually determines a specific characteristic of that organism. And then an allele is a possible form of a gene. So when I talk about tongue rolling, I can say that you have the allele for tongue rolling, or you don't have the allele for tongue rolling. In other words, you have the allele for non-rolling, uh, that sort of thing. So it's a possible form of a gene. We're going to get really into alleles to then figure out what trait individuals have when we look at Punnett squares. So for example, an allele for blue eyes is different than the allele for brown eyes, and it's different forms of the same gene. So it's like different answers to a question. I asked you the other day uh, what your favorite candy was, possibly, or maybe not. But if I did, then, you know, there's options that you can give me. Uh, and that would be like the alleles. It's the answers to that question. Uh, in the same way that when I have alleles for a gene, it's the possible forms that I have for that particular question. Okay. Let's get into acquired and inherited traits. And I'm actually missing the definition here. So we'll maybe just write it out right on this slide. An acquired trait is something you gain throughout your lifetime. So gained in lifetime. It is not passed on. To offspring. So that is not what we're dealing with when we're talking about genetics. Well, if we have an inherited trait, this is something that uh, is in your genetic code. It can be passed on. to offspring. So it goes from one generation to the next. So if I take a look at this picture, and I know weird pictures, I just took Awkward Family Photos, which is kind of a fun book series or website if you want to take a look. It's, uh, it's quite entertaining. But if I take a look at this photo, let's talk about some of the acquired versus the inherited traits. So if I look at acquired traits, and I know that that guy just kind of stands out more than the rest, we could say that the acquired trait, talking about spray tans, is probably his spray tan. Yeah, that's an acquired trait, not inherited. Um, if we look at other traits, possibly his muscular physique is probably something that's acquired, although there is a piece to that that's inherited, uh, ability to actually like build muscle and so on. There is a genetic component to that, right? Uh, if I take a look at that boy, his sad disposition <laughs> uh, could actually be something that's somewhat inherited. A lot of our personality ends up actually being part of our genetic code. Um, so that's kind of some of the idea, right? If I look at brown hair, well, that's an inherited trait. It's something that came from the genetic code. Now, if you dye your hair, well, then that's an acquired trait. What about tattoos? What do you think? Is a tattoo an acquired or an inherited trait? And of course it's an acquired trait because when you get a tattoo, <clears throat> that's not gonna be passed on to the next generation. It's, it's just, that is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to end up going to your offspring. So that would be horrible if you did get tattoos from um, your, your parents, right? That it just kept on going generation after generation and you got stuck with your parents' bad decisions. Uh, but anyways, things like that are an acquired trait. Take a look at this picture. Why don't you select the things that are uh, acquired traits? So things like the permed hair, the braces, right? These are acquired traits. If 
if I were to talk about inherited traits, I could actually say that maybe teeth that need braces could be inherited, that uh, hair color is probably somewhat inherited. We're actually seeing dimples in the one child. So I'm guessing that that's an inherited trait as well, which is interesting because it looks like the other two people, mom and sibling, uh, do not have dimples. So I'm guessing that dad actually has dimples. And we'll talk about that later because dimples is actually a dominant trait. Uh, but yeah, so there's some examples. Moving on to this. What do you think are some inherited traits in this picture? So we could say that the brown hair is an inherited trait. Let's say the brown eyes are inherited. Okay, the fair skin. Okay, cool, cool. Things that are acquired, of course, the tattoos are acquired. Amazing martial arts skills that I'm assuming they're having because they look like they're about to go into a karate dojo. Um, maybe that is acquired. Maybe that's a big assumption. I'm just I'm seeing that tattoo and just assuming that, which is maybe unfair. Uh, anyways, so those are some examples. Anyways, offspring inherits alleles from both parents. So if we were to take a look at some examples, uh, sorry, trying to get back to selecting there. Hair color, you get one allele from your mother and one from your father, and the combination of the alleles you get from your mom and your dad actually determine your traits. So if I were to take father with brown hair and mother with blonde hair, what do you think you'd end up with in terms of offspring? And that's what we're going to take a look at in genetics is what they would actually have as a trait for the offspring. And some things aren't incredibly clear. And, and some of the things we're going to learn are too simplistic, but that's what genetics is all about, is trying to figure that out. Here's kind of a funny picture, right? So if I take a look at uh, mom and dad, right? And then all of the kids basically have the red hair. So the joke is that mom's DNA game is strong. Uh, but yeah, interesting. So we're going to take a look at genetics and how that passes on from one generation to the next. So the combination of the two parent alleles will determine your characteristics, the characteristics of the offspring that we're looking at, like hair color. But the question is, which alleles actually show up? So what trait do we end up having when the alleles get passed on? Basically, alleles have two different categories that we're gonna look at. Either an allele is dominant, which means it shows up when only one of the alleles is present, or recessive which means that it only shows up if there's no dominant allele present. So dominant overrides recessive. So if you have one dominant and one recessive allele, the dominant will express itself, the recessive will not. The only way you'll see a recessive trait is if both alleles, the one you got from your mom and your dad, if both alleles that you got were recessive, then you'll have that recessive trait. Let's watch this video on dominant and recessive genes or alleles. Okay, so in a dominant allele, only one dominant allele needs to be present for the trait to be expressed. And we're gonna start working in shorthand for alleles. And what we normally use is a capital letter to represent a dominant trait. We wanna use letters where the uppercase and lowercase are quite different. R is kind of like the default letter we use for traits. We use R very often. And the reason why is because a capital R is very different in how it looks than the little r. Bad ones to use would be things like C, where it's the exact same for the upper and the lower case. For a recessive allele, two recessive alleles have to be present, so no dominant is present for the trait to be expressed. And that's shown with a lowercase letter, so that's a recessive allele. So let me quickly give you an example. Tongue rolling is a dominant trait. Okay, so tongue rolling, that trait, is dominant. So normally we would show dominant as capital R for the allele. So if we had an individual that had capital R, little r, so they got capital R, let's say from dad, okay, and they got little r from mom. So those are the two alleles they got for the trait for tongue rolling. Then this person would be able to roll their tongue. They're a roller. Okay, because they have the dominant traits. The dominant allele is what shows itself. 
If instead a person got little r, little r, so both mom and dad gave the allele for not rolling, then this would be a non-roller. They cannot roll their tongue. In the same way, if I had capital R, capital R, so mom and dad both gave the allele for tongue rolling, then this person is also going to be a roller. They can roll their tongue just fine. They're not more of a roller than this person. Both can roll. Okay, if both parents have a dominant gene, or allele might be a better term, then offspring will also have the dominant gene. If both parents have a recessive allele, then offspring will have, uh, actually gene is the right word, that's fine, because we're talking about the trait here. So if both parents have a dominant trait or gene, uh, then the offspring will have the dominant trait. Uh, normally, that actually isn't quite true. It's not always true. We're going to get into that. You can actually have both parents having a dominant trait, and then you could actually have offspring having the recessive trait. So I actually don't even like this slide. It's too much generalities, and it's making it too simple, and it's not always true. Now, this is true. If both parents have a recessive trait, then offspring will have the recessive trait. They don't have any source for the dominant allele, so therefore it would have to be the recessive that moves on. If one parent has dominant and the other recessive, it is likely that the offspring will have the dominant gene. Likely true, um, but not necessarily true. Uh, in fact, it could even just be a 50% chance. So I'm not super comfortable with this statement or with this statement. And hopefully later on, it will become clear why I'm not confident with that in future lessons as we get into dominant and recessive. So let's take a look at dimples. Dimples are actually something that is a dominant trait. So this individual has dimples, which means that they either have the alleles of big D, little d, or big D, big D. Uh, they cannot be little d, little d, because if they were, they would not have dimples because it would have the non-dimple trait showing up. Now this individual is little d, little d, because they don't have dimples. We know that therefore, as a result, they would have the two recessive alleles in order for them not to have dimples. So now the question is, will their child have dimples or not? And the answer is, it, it depends. If this person is this, okay, uh, then that means that no matter what, their child would have dimples. Okay, no matter what, they would end up with a dimple child, and there's a dimple child. But let's say instead that the guy has big D, little d for alleles, then that means that either the kid could end up with big D, little d, right? Big D from dad, little d from mom, or they could have little d, little d, and end up like this and not have dimples. So when I actually go back to this picture here, because this person has dimples, right? Dimples, no dimples, no dimples. So actually this mom, little d, little d, this person, little d, little d, this person, big D, little d, and dad has to be big D, little d as well. And the reason why is assuming that these two kids came from the same dad, uh, that this allele would be provided to this kid, right? And then this allele would have been given to this kid. This mom cannot give the allele for dimples. So at the end of the day, we actually can figure out dad's traits by looking at this picture. Is that crazy? We can figure out some stuff about dad. We know that dad has dimples and that he is what we call heterozygous for having dimples, hetero meaning different. So different alleles. Uh, anyways, kind of neat. Kind of neat that we can figure that stuff out. So that is your quick intro, intro to looking at, um, well, a few things. Continuous versus discrete. So continuous has a whole spectrum of options, while discrete has set options for a trait. Uh, it's kind of yes or no or set options. We talked about acquired versus inherited. Acquired, acquired is gained throughout life and cannot be passed on to offspring, while inherited can be passed on to offspring, and that's in the realm of genetics. Uh, it's held within DNA and it's passed on from one generation to the next. And then we learned about dominant and recessive alleles and what alleles are in generally, which is uh, basically a uh, version of a gene 
okay? And when we have a dominant allele, only one has to be there for it to be expressed or to show up in offspring. And recessive allele, both alleles have to be recessive in order for that trait to show up in offspring. Okay, well, that's it. Have a good rest of your day.